Welcome to my channel. In the last videos, I had discussed about how replication works in Mongo database and how to configure Mongo database. So now, let us see some more details regarding replication in Mongo database. So let me log in to my primary node that is running on port 27001. So as I have discussed in my previous videos, how replication works is we have an op lock collection on the primary and whatever operations happens on the primary is written to the op lock and the same op lock data is copied to the secondary nodes. So now let us see how the op lock collection looks like. So the op lock collection is present in the database local and the collection name is oplock.rs. So if I execute a find command, you can see each operation is stored as a document. For better readability, let me show you only one document. You can see this is a sample document for our op lock collection. We have a timestamp field, which is the BSON timestamp. We have a random hash value. We have a op lock protocol version. We have the operation. So presently it is N, which means this particular document does not contain any operation. It can be I, which means an insert operation. U, which means update operation. D, which means a delete operation. N, as I told you, there is no operation in this document and C, which represents any command which leads to change in the database, for example, a schema change. Then we have the namespace, the namespace on which this particular operation is happening, and we'll have the details of that particular operation. I'm creating a new database, MyDB. So this is the document which I'm going to insert. I'll switch to my local database. So I'm searching for a create operation of the collection, MyTBL. So you can see there is timestamp and the operation is C that is creation of a collection. My TBL collection is created and by default the index is also created. Now if I look for an operation which is an insert operation on the namespace mydb.mytbl collection. This is the entry for that insert operation. And as you can see, this was the data which I inserted, name, test, and age 10, and the underscore ID is created by default. So this is the particular document in our case, which will be copied to the op log of the secondary and will be written to the secondary databases. Now verify if it has been written. I'll exit my primary. I'll log into the secondary. So first I have to give slave okay to enable read on my secondary. Now I can check show DBs. So you can see my DB has been created. And if I check for data in my TBL collection, you can see that particular data has been copied to the secondary. So this op lock collection is a capped collection wherein a fixed size is pre-allocated to the op lock collection. Normally it is 5% of the free disk space. Now we can know about the different stats of our op lock collection using db.oplog.rs.stats method. So these are the different statistics regarding our oplog. That is our current size, the maximum size to which it can grow and many such details. You can use rs.printreplicationinfo to get the details about the current oplog size, the total length of the operation stored, the time when the first event was recorded, the time when the last event was recorded, and the current time. You can also use print slave replication info. So this will give details about the slave servers and how much they are behind the primary. So these details will be very helpful in cases when there is a lag between the primary and the secondary. And then we can investigate the reasons for the lag and act accordingly. Now other than rs.status, we can also use db.serverStatus.repl. So the output is similar to rs.status, but we'll get a little more refined information. Hope the information which I provided was helpful for you. Thank you for watching my video.